put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. The Matrix Mood Review A young hacker with the alias Neo is looking for the terrorist Morpheus. After he... I suppose he meets some of his allies first, Morpheus's allies. Then he is detained by government agents for his hacker activities. And finally he does meet Morpheus and is able to ask him what is the Matrix and what, what is it that's wrong with the world because he can tell there's something. I'm not going to give away the actual twist, the, the first of a number of plot twists in this. And if, if you haven't watched any of these, then only watch this one and pretend that two and three don't exist. And I mean, there are other parts of the franchise that can be worth your attention, but yeah, two and three, not, you know, the plot of this one does end, there's closure, it's similar to the original Star Wars trilogy, they, you know, the director wasn't sure if they would get to do more than one, so they made sure that the one they made had some closure, because if if it didn't, they really weren't going to get another, you know, if, if people left the theater with, you know, not satisfied, then they weren't going to get another chance. And if you are one of the people who, you know, is is baffled about, you know, what, what do I refer to the Wachowskis as now that they've transitioned into women? The, the fact that they've transitioned into women should clue you in that you refer to them as women now. That is how they identify. And if you're, you know, wondering about these specific names, Lana used to identify as Larry, and Lily used to identify as Andy. And if you feel the need to tell the rest of us that they don't live up to your standards of beauty, Screw you! Now, this is one of those movies where our heroes are these deadpan, custom shade wearing, you know, leather clad badasses who stoically and repressively say very little. It's, you know, this was a thing in the late 90s and early 2000s and some of the acting is limited by this, some of the acting just isn't all that good. There are some surprisingly hammy performances in here, in particular by the, the character known as Tank, who really, I have no idea what was going on there, but yeah, like, he... <laughs> the, the, the term acting-gasm really applies to him. Still, the amount of dialogue, the exact wording, and the lines really tell you a lot about these characters, even for the characters who don't say all that much. And that is something I've, I've heard some, some of the characters in this you don't spend that much time with, and, you know, you, you don't know them as well as the lead, certainly. But, excuse me, certainly they do have just, just enough, they, they get to express who they are just enough that you do walk away with a real sense of what this character was like, you know, which is often not the case for, like, the counting the protagonists. The main group of good guys 
I think it's basically 10 people or just about and yeah you're not gonna get to learn all of you know that's just the good guys then there are the the bad guys who also have you know one or two major characters that yeah and the you know that the what they say is not the only way they express themselves you also really get a sense of who they are from the clothes they wear the the way they fight the way they move you know with this very designed not resigned look and you do get to care about the the character the majority of the characters that we're supposed to care about and the that really is the 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 designs I mentioned the custom shades and then you have these really cool you know leather and like you know long trench coats and this kind of stuff and yeah it's just it's incredibly cool and so yeah just really expresses one of the characters and only one of them wears white where the rest of them pretty much exclusively wear black and yeah it's it it stands out without feeling like it doesn't fit in it's it's the good kind of yeah and this made badasses of actors you really didn't expect to ever see be badass this movie was also the first introduction of most of the actors to me. I knew Keanu Reeves, of course, before, but I think that was pretty much the only. So, you know, every single, everything I've seen them in since this, you know, I've had to compare to, you know, it's, it's hard for me to look at Lawrence Fishburne and not see Morpheus. Now, Will Smith was considered for the role of Neo, and I'm really glad he didn't take it and Keanu Reeves definitely is not the best actor out there but it is clear that he did really understand what this was about you know he understood the themes and such like all of the actors were made to read like entire books about the philosophy and such in here and yeah when you listen to Keanu Reeves in like interviews from the time and such he really completely understood what, you know, acting talent notwithstanding, he's not this kind of dumb guy that, you know, people think of him as Ted, which, yeah, that was a pretty, that's, that's a quite memorable persona of his, but he's not Ted in real life. Neo is not an interesting character plain and simple and you know it really is the the supporting characters are the you know the much more interesting character although you know to the the yeah there there are several really compelling characters in this but yeah neo is not one of them and it makes for this, you know, self-insert fantasy, which this is very much a case of, it makes that much easier and more satisfying. And this is, you know, this is a thing with like major franchises, action movies and such. You know, it's not not always, but for sure, you know, I I don't know Harry Potter, not that into fantasy, not not into fantasy. Lord of the Rings and the original Neverending Story, pretty much the exception to, to that rule for me, but I'm told that Harry Potter is very much the same, and I have not subjected myself to Twilight, but again, I hear it's the same there, so uh, yeah, that is a thing. One thing that does, you know, stand out somewhat is that Neo is very passive-aggressive in the face of authority, you know, he's not like gonna shout them down or something, but you know, if they try to, like, early on, and, and this is, of course, also a trait that makes for satisfying self-insert, because we all want to tell off those annoying 
frustrating authority figures that we have to deal with. So, yeah, early on in this, he oversleeps and shows up late for work. And he, you know, we see him in his boss's office. And his boss gives this long, you know, speech about how, you know, there's actually... This franchise has a lot of long speeches, and this is a case where they, you know, they kind of knew to have a little fun and kind of point out that it's a, that it's a long speech. So during this speech where, you know, the boss is basically saying, be here on time or I will fire you from now on, you know. And Neo is like, every, every time the boss is like looking away, you know, and and just speechifying. He's just, you know, he's he's enjoying the power that he has, and you know, tell me, you know, he's, yeah, as much as he means to to exude that he hates to, you know, this is this is such a waste of my time, and you know, no, 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 he's he's enjoying that he gets to tell someone else off. And during this, every time that he looks away, Neo like looks over to the window because the there are, there are these window washers right outside, and they're actually they're, they're director cameos. So the directors really did mean to focus on how clean the windows were in this scene. And yeah, he's just he's looking at these window washers, and it's like, and and that's not that's. It's not a very compelling thing to look at, you know, so it purely is, I'm not even going to pay attention to this guy, you know, and just, yeah, it's it's really sad. And, and when dealing with these government agents, also, you know, he's not intimidated by them. The Morpheus is one of the most compelling characters. He is very much a zealot, really blinded by his faith, very intense, and yeah, you really get, like, even if you were not the, the kind to really care about the, the cause that he cares about, which I'm not going to give away here, he makes you care, you know. It, it actually, Lawrence Fishburne said that when he first watched the movie, he was terrified of Morpheus. So, yeah. And Trinity is very much a soldier, but, you know, she can sometimes be more feminine and even hopeful at times. And, yeah, I... I have to admit, I've always loved the trinity of Neo, Morpheus, and Trinity, and the the government agents. Just you know, agents for short. Are you know they they have this Secret Service look to them, and yeah, they're just really they're they're a real intimidating presence. And well, I'm not going to go into detail about his character here since. There would be spoilers. Agent Smith is very compelling. He's he's one of those villains we love to hate, and yeah, again, a really compelling character. There's there's a lot there, and yeah, he he gives an incredibly memorable performance. Hugo Weaving as that. Mouse is this really fun, sweet, very young excitable naive character and I don't know why I've, I've seen him in almost nothing else he's in Star Wars episode 2 yeah that character and that's that's basically it and it's just, you know I, I quite like that bit in you know that otherwise horrible trilogy and that's that's basically all like when there, there are times where I feel, oh, hey, that's Mouse, but then I look a little closer and it's actually Jack Noseworthy, who I also like. And yes, the androgyny of a number of the characters in this is intentional.
This is very much a Hollywood action sci-fi thriller, but you know, the, the sci-fi in there does suggest this one actually has a brain to it. Which actually, yeah, a lot of a lot of Hollywood sci-fi, especially when you throw in the action and thriller genres, don't really. This has truly amazing action, choreographed martial arts, and you can actually see that it's the actors. You know, they the the camera the 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 camera will let you see the entire you know them them do the moves and you really let they really the camera moves really let you take in all of it you know and they're not hiding stunt performers or taking the easy way out for really tough moves you know they they almost never do this and you have these great shootouts and chases on foot and this also has some of the coolest action setups that you know had been thought up you know before this you know there's the this one on one you know kung fu fight in a japanese dojo there's this helicopter rescue from a skyscraper and they're also paced really well none of them are too long or too short now the the middle section of the movie does have less stakes and consequences for the action it's basically mostly training for like the real you know the the real fight in training in a relatively safe environment and yeah still the the you know even these fights add to the development of plot themes character and the middle section does not get bogged down in spite of a lot of exposition and explaining some people say that oh, only the start and end has action watch the movie again the there's the the second half has a ton of action and the the start has some great action and the middle just has less stakes to the action but long never passes without action in this movie and if if there's any part of the movie that doesn't have a lot of action it is the first portion of you know but the you know the and the effects are excellent with you know they they have some incredibly talented people working on this and the you know the incredibly talented bill pope did the cinematography and really does a lot to that that really does a lot to give it its incredibly you know really recognizable stylized look you know before this he had done the first dark man and as i mentioned when i reviewed that trilogy you can really tell like in the second movie they try to do some of they they have some scenes that are really similar to the first movie and the change in cinematographer is just incredibly noticeable you know and after this he went on to make team america you know, do the cinematography for Team America, where he also did amazing work. And it is a truly cinematic movie. It takes from a lot of different genres, among them neo-noir. You know, there's there's a lot of comic book kind of yeah in in here. You can you can tell that in part. The Wachowskis, you know, they were comic book people before, the, you know, they worked on comics before the, you know, I'm, I haven't actually really, I'm not sure they have done much in comics. I think it's almost exclusively movies these days. And they also got some people working on this that were, you know, that were comics people and especially known for their comics.
this has a lot of what the Wachowskis like, and that means a lot of kung fu, a very clear anime, and, you know, in influence, and you know, John Woo. You know, they they wanted to do anime for real, and yeah, they they really did. There are these really elegant, you know, flowing like, you know, obviously trench coats, and there's this. There's this bit where there's a really big explosion and the fire kind of expands out in slow-mo. And there's this bit where there's an explosion in like glass and it kind of the, the glass kind of ripples the or the the impact ripples out through the glass and yeah. And there's some inspiration from the genre of, you know, Western movies, and a number of really famous, you know, among the works are Alice in Wonderland, and among the thinkers are Karl Marx, Franz Kafka, Zen, Homer's Odyssey, and Baudrillard, which they actually had to read. For this. Unfortunately, he did not think that the movie really did his work justice, and that's that's too bad. That you know, you can't always, unfortunately, satisfy the you know the the people that whose whose work you try to emulate and such. And this takes a, a lot of like like little bits of this will really evoke other directors. There's some Cronenberg and Alien kind of gross, some Hitchcockian kind of tension, some Fritz Lang dehumanizing modern city design, some Polanski creepy. The music is mostly either orche orchestral or electronic and yeah, it's it's amazing and it fits so well. Now, critics have pointed to it being fairly con conventional music, considering that the rest of the film is so, you know, def defies genre and you know goes against a lot of different kind of yeah, you know, combines and defies various cliches and tropes. And the, the critics have all also called Bound made for Hollywood agents and I, I can see what they mean by that. Now this really changed how action movies look, are made, and changed our expectations of them. No, not, action, not all action movies, but the big Hollywood blockbuster action movie. You know, today we actually expect the leads to have trained for months to be great at martial arts. You know, the, we expect different types of action. We expect a lot of action, and we expect it to last, to have a great scope, and to you know, to have been made at a considerable budget. The production design is incredible here. I've already mentioned the, you know, the the clothes and such, but also, yeah, the the sets and various things. I, I'm not going to go into detail here since it would spoil, but I will in the thoughts video. And this is very imaginative and smart. You never know quite what to expect of it, and there are a lot of philosophical ideas. You know, some some of them religious and open questions, and most of these are woven well into the film. They they are largely not original, though the plot and you know the the combining them is is fairly original, but. In, and in addition to that, this does also communicate these ideas to a mainstream audience to whom th these were new ideas. This... 
you know the the ideas that it 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 takes ideas from different places and combines them and i will go into more detail on the ideas themselves in the thoughts video and often even like just words a character's name a line of dialogue will have actual meaning to them and a few of these are really on the nose and they do not really come together they they hint at different things and if if you watch the movie and you're really hoping that by the end these ideas will have kind of been been tied together in a really meaningful way and kind of you know will will pay off in some way they they don't the you know the idea was more to actually introduce all these different ideas and to have them there rather than you know considering how many different ideas they would not have been able to combine them all in a meaningful way but you know that's that's the the trade off either you know the amount of content or the you might say a sort of that that all the content really completely goes together but the you know the movie is incredibly infinitely quotable and incredibly memorable and gripping you know the the almost everything this did that was new to people even if it had been done elsewhere but you know not mainstream was you know parodied and the like in you know basically everything everywhere you know parody movies parody scripts you know fan films and shorts and yeah and as some have noted there is not a lot of humor in this it is yeah. It's it is a film that takes itself very seriously a lot of the time and kind of when when it the the ideas it doesn't there there isn't a lot of kind of lightness to you know there there are a few times where characters actually you know the, the something excuse me, something complex is being said, or the, you know, yeah, I, I only mentioned the, you know, the boss chewing Neo out, you know, that is, that is a speech, that, it, you know, it's, he doesn't just go in there and the boss says, you know, in, in just a few words, if, if you show up late one more time, I will fire you, no, he, he has this entire little speech and, you know, in that instance, the the movie knows to make a you know maybe it was a producer, no, I'm not sure, but it's it's one of the only times that there's any humor around that. Mostly, the movie just you know brings up and explores these ideas, and that can feel a little heavy at times. Can, you know, also considering that it is in part an action movie. And there are times where it's definitely cheesy, and other times where it's pretentious. The the lines are intentionally written and delivered as not how people actually talk. And the you know, given that there is so much distinct, different content in this. It you know it is really an experience, especially on that first viewing. And if you don't really, if you don't, if you're not on the journey with the movie, which is not you know some people, even though they might want to, are just not gonna be feeling it. And in that case, yeah, you're probably going to absolutely hate it because it really it is, you know, like that the whole way through. 
you know, the, the movie does not really slow down and just, you know, I don't know, pick one specific, you know, there's always, it's always these big ideas or these, you know, action scenes where you see things that you're not used to seeing in, yeah, it's, it's always showing you something you didn't, yeah. And the movie is 132 minutes, not counting the end credits, and 136 width. And in one of the featurettes from, you know, all the way back, you know, 99, the, actually, you know, the, the movie actually had people really connect online, you know, through the ideas in the film. And, you know, it's, it's, it's such a sweet, you know, from, from when the internet was new, you know, to today when people connect online, it's usually through hateful slurs uh, here on YouTube. If you like this review and want a more detailed one, the link is in the description box.